The first Darius game is perhaps the most ported of any of the games in the series. Now, I'm personally not a huge fan of the original game. Don't get me wrong, I think it's fun and all, but my heart will always belong to Darius Gaiden. The original just didn't age quite as well as later entries in the series. But wait. The version that came out for the Mega Drive and Genesis Mini was released in 2019, no? And whoa, whoa, would you look at that? It even has a physical release. So is this the ultimate version of Taito's original Darius? Let's find out. As for the physical release itself, I got the Japanese version. It seems like both the Western release and the Japanese release might be a bit limited, which makes sense since this is a game being released for a console that's older than I am. But if you're interested in picking up the Japanese version, the only region locking you have to worry about is the physical shape of the cartridge. A simple Game Genie can be used as a workaround on an American system without any issues. This version was released by Columbus Circle, who I got my Glaylancer reprint from. As always, they've done an excellent job here with a full color manual and even a little postcard as well. I was really glad they didn't change the box art, as the original Darius box art is absolutely iconic. Now before we get started, I just want to let you know that any footage where I'm playing as Tiat or the blue ship is recorded from the Mega Drive Mini, and any footage where I'm playing as Proko or the red ship is recorded from the physical cart on my Model 1 Genesis, and I'll be referring to this port as Darius MD, as that's how it was called on the Japanese online store I got it from. If you're familiar with the original arcade release of Darius, it was famous for its branching paths that allowed players to explore different zones in order to get one of seven different endings. Unfortunately, in the arcade there wasn't a lot of boss variety. The boss order was always the same no matter what route you took. This was updated with the Turbo Graphics port of Darius called Super Darius, and Darius MD brings this feature back once again. This means that the zones that you pick really make a big impact on your playthrough. You can map out what route works best for you, and once you've mastered one of them, allows you to replay the game, but with a totally different feel each time. The big differences between Super Darius and Darius MD are the speed at which the game plays, and the screen size. For some reason, having the screen scroll a little bit vertically as the player moves can be a big turnoff for a lot of people, and this often leads people to not liking the Turbo Graphics port. To those people, I recommend giving Darius MD a shot since the graphics were all completely redone to run specifically on the Genesis, so there's no more vertical screen scrolling. However, Darius MD is pretty challenging. Since everything moves a little bit faster, it's a bit more difficult to react to enemies flying at you and the game requires you to memorize enemy patterns more so than allowing you to use quick reflexes. I find that keeping my ship on the far right side of the screen while terrifying at first, was actually the best strategy, at least on earlier levels, since I was able to destroy most enemies before they could clutter the screen and put me on the defensive. While most people really love the three screen aspect ratio of the arcade version of Darius, I've gotta say, <laughs> I'm glad Taito didn't try to do any weird aspect ratio tricks for the Genesis release. As cool as having three screens worth of game is, I always felt like it just made things more difficult to see, and made it so that if you got stuck on the left hand side of the screen, you would have to wait an eternity to be able to shoot if you missed your shot, due to the limited amounts of bullets you're able to fire at once. In addition, the arcade game used a checkpoint feature, meaning that if you died, you would get sent backwards. Thankfully, this has been changed in Darius MD, so if you lose a life, you simply respawn where you were and continue on from there. The soundtrack of the original Darius has always been a favorite of mine. <laughs> Hell, I even own it on vinyl, so I was really excited to hear how the Mega Drive's hardware would handle it. The soundtrack is almost arcade perfect. I mean, if you played a track out loud for me and asked me to identify which version it belonged to, I honestly couldn't tell you which one it was. I'm sure Darius experts can probably tell, but for me, I certainly couldn't, and to be honest, I was a little disappointed by that. 
You see, one of the fun things about 80s and 90s game consoles was seeing all the changes that had to be made for different ports of games. For example, while the soundtrack of the arcade version of the game Outrun is undoubtedly a classic, I really enjoy the Genesis version, partly because the music sounds different and even includes a bonus track. But when it comes to Darius MD, they went through all the effort of adding new bosses and such, but the soundtrack is just the same as the arcade. I know I'm nitpicking, and don't worry, this doesn't by any means lessen my opinion of the game, I just thought it'd be fun to be able to hear a distinctly Genesis rendition of the original Darius' soundtrack. With all that being said though, this port makes good use of stereo audio, especially on the first stage with instruments bouncing back and forth between each speaker, at least if you have the right setup. I always appreciate when Genesis games put stereo audio to good use. Graphically, this version of Darius looks nice, but aside from foreground and background elements, there isn't really anything interesting in the way of parallax scrolling going on. There's so many backdrops that could have been given so much more life if a layer of parallax scrolling was added. I understand they were probably going for an arcade perfect port, and that version just had static backgrounds, but it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity to me. Other than that though, the game looks absolutely beautiful on the Genesis. The ship sprites and shields pop out, and bullets never blend into the background. The bosses could maybe have used a little more animation to make them feel more alive, but the amount of detail on them is great, and I can forgive their stiff movements since there are so many of them. The 26 different bosses are made up of both bosses from the original Darius game, as well as some from Darius 2, including my boy, Trio Song! <laughs> Bosses have a wide variety of attacks, and some are going to be much easier to read than others, so there's a ton of replay value not only finding what your favorite route is, but also mastering all the different boss patterns. Now, Darius MD is a really hard game. Like, it'll really kick your ass if you don't know what you're doing, but thankfully in the options menu, they allow you to choose between two difficulty modes by selecting which ship you want to pilot, either Proko or Tiot. As Proko, the game plays just like the arcade version. Your weapons have three power levels, those being bullets, a laser, and a wave. If you die before upgrading to the next level, then your weapons get reset to the base of whatever level you're currently on, so if you've got the lasers and you die, you don't have to worry about getting sent back to using the bullets again. However, it takes a lot of upgrades to get to the next power level, so it can actually be pretty tricky to get your ship up to maximum firepower. However, as Tiot, you never lose your ship's upgrades and she actually deals a significant amount of more damage than Proko does, making the game much more forgiving. The caveat though is that you also can't save your high scores as Tiot. If this is your first time playing the original Darius, I HIGHLY suggest learning this version as Tiot since when I first started on this version, I felt like playing as Proko was so damn challenging. However, I felt that the entire experience overall would be so much less frustrating if the first zone wasn't so damn difficult. This is the case with most ports of the original Darius. That first stage is absolutely brutal. It's not the hardest stage in the game, but for a first stage it's a little unforgiving if you ask me. By now, I've played pretty much every version of the original Darius, so I've got this stage memorized, but for newbies or anyone who doesn't have the stage committed to memory, it's a giant first hurdle to overcome. And half of the fun of Darius games are getting to see the giant mecha fish bosses at the end of each zone, but the original Darius isn't afraid to kick you back to the beginning before even getting to see the first boss. However, I have beaten this game as both Proko and Tiot, so as long as you stick with it, getting a 1cc is not impossible. I'd say it falls somewhere between Darius Gaiden and G Darius in terms of difficulty. Definitely not insurmountable, but it isn't going down without a fight, I can tell you that. Thankfully though, the game is really, really fun! The control, the hitboxes, the way that you power up your ship, experimenting with different routes to find which one is the most optimal for you, the 26 different bosses to encounter, it's easily the best that the original Darius has ever been. 
However, it depends which version you're playing, as there are actually a couple of differences between the Mega Drive Mini version and the physical release. On the Mega Drive Mini, there are no continues at all. I hate when shoot'em up devs do this. The shoot'em up genre as a whole is pretty niche already. By making your game without continues, you're severely limiting your potential player pool. While I don't need continues to beat this game, having them there makes the grind to learning the patterns of later levels much more tolerable for veterans and creates a much more welcoming environment for new players. The Saturn port of Darius Gaiden and even Darius 2 were kind enough to give us three continues, and I think that's a perfect way to balance them. I get that the developers don't want players to just credit feed to the end, but setting a strict limit of three continues was a great way to make new players feel like they accomplished something when they beat the game for the first time, even using all three continues. I certainly know that's how I felt when I first beat Darius Gaiden, and it inspired me to get better and better until I could beat it without continues, and then even without dying. It just seems like shoot'em ups aren't going to gain any popularity if they're only catered to people who already love them and don't make themselves accessible to new players. But in the physical release, as long as you're playing in extra mode, you're granted three continues. Unfortunately, using a continue knocks you down to base power levels and you can't continue on the last stage, so it's far from perfect, but I was glad that continues were included at all. In total, there are three different modes you can play on the physical cart, old, new, and extra. While I can't explicitly tell what the differences are, if they're anything like their arcade counterparts, it's mostly slight balance changes and adjustments to enemy health. I always stick with extra mode though, both because of the continue option and, well, that's the title of the game on the box, so might as well play that version, right? Another difference is that on the Genesis Mini port, there aren't any options to change your controls around. Now, for most Genesis games, this really isn't an issue, but I do find it kind of annoying to have to hold down both the A and B button just to fire my missiles and main gun at the same time. But this was fixed in the physical release. Now A and B split the fire between shots and missiles, and the C button shoots both. You can even adjust the rate at which your auto-fire shoots. However, the worst difference for me was that the Mega Drive Mini port crashed on me a lot. Now, I am playing on a European Mega Drive Mini in the United States, so I don't know if that could be having some effect, but it happened to me about a third of the time that I would play, and only when I would play Darius. Honestly, I was lucky I was able to capture footage of the whole game on the Mini. That's how bad the crashes were. However, I haven't heard anyone else complain about this, so it could just have something to do with my setup. Both versions also have a boss rush mode, but the physical release lets you choose between new, old, and extra versions when playing boss rush. Both versions also have an option to set the boss types to the arcade originals for Purists, or the 26 boss mode, but I don't know why you would ever want fewer bosses since all of the new ones are so cool and exploring each zone to find what bosses are easier or more challenging is half the fun, at least in my opinion. I just wish the physical cart had a way to practice the game without starting from the beginning. The Genesis Mini version has save states that could come in handy, but that's obviously not included on the cart. There are so many ports of the original Darius, so if you've never played it before, I recommend doing some research and finding out which port sounds like the most accessible to you. But if I had to pick only one to play for the rest of my life, I would easily pick the physical release on the Genesis, no doubt about it. This version turns what I thought to be a very mundane game in the Darius series into perhaps my second favorite entry in the series, of course, just behind Darius Gaiden. I'm Boffner, and thanks for watching. See ya! And if anyone out there is wondering where my Shining Force 3 videos are, don't worry, I'm working on it. These games are just very, very long.